Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the session on mentoring for apprenticeships. My name is Anne Ashworth, and I'm head of employee apprenticeships here at Pearson PLC. Um, and really, this is the sort of material that I use when I'm training up line managers in Pearson or people managers or ambassadors or coaches who are going to become mentors of apprenticeships apprentices sorry um, and it's really about the importance of the mentoring role to enable an apprentice to be successful regardless of what type of business they're in regardless of what type of apprenticeship that they are doing so I hope you find this interesting um, and I will try and be as uh, full in my direction and guidance throughout this as I possibly can be. So it's really aimed at people that will be taking on a mentoring role, potentially supporting apprentices, but I would say really early talent. So that might be young people that are on work experience or industrial placements, i.e. T levels with you. Um, or it could be people that are just perhaps haven't worked for a while and are coming new into a workplace or into employment, because obviously we don't always have people in physical workplaces now either. So very much geared at those sort of people. It's about, you know, what is mentoring? What's the difference between mentoring and coaching? And then really talking through the, the elements of that mentoring relationship that are hugely effective for both parties. And I would say both parties because a mentor needs to get something out of the relationship as does the mentee. And of course, for the mentee, it's about how do they maximize that opportunity of having a mentor working with them. Then some sort of tips and hints and things that possibly you could use to support the mentoring relationship. And then a little bit of how you look back. And if you look thinking of return on investment, for example, then how do you look at the mentoring in that situation with whatever it is you as an organization are looking for from having put that role into place. So objectives then. Understand, and understanding the importance of mentoring, I think is absolutely critical. Um, understanding that the mentor role is, is incredibly um, effective and has huge benefits for anybody that's either doing that role or being the mentee. Making sure you know what it's not as much as what it is. The tools that you can use to really make that mentoring a role um, systematic and effective for everybody. And then certainly ways that you can develop the mentee to really utilize the mentor more fully. Okay, so I just thought we'd start off with a little bit of a definition. So I found these two definitions, one of them very much UK orientated, another one that is very much based out of the US. But I thought really interesting because dependent upon the size of business that you are, the people that you have um, working with that early talent person, then you might have a little bit of both, or you might be more geared to more one than the other. But the CIPD one, the act or process of helping and guiding another person to support personal development. And then um, from the University of Texas in the US, um, more about partnership between two people that supports both personal and professional development um, between a less experienced individual and one who is more experienced, which is the mentor. And I thought, again, an interesting point here is over the course of the career, you may have many mentors and mentees. I think that's an important thing to remember is I'm looking at it here very much from an early talent perspective. But, you know, you could be at any point in your life at any point in your career and actually having a ment mentor would be really, really beneficial. You know, if you think of them, they're there to guide you on your professional development as well as possibly personal, then um, they're incredibly powerful depending upon where you're at within your life and your career. And that is not to get them confused with coaching. This is still very much about a very um, specific thing that they're helping you with. Very usually very much linked to job role. So they're probably somebody who's been doing um, the job that you're doing as an early talent person. Um, perhaps they've been in a team for quite a while. Maybe they're the person that is being groomed to move into first line management role, for example. Or it could be a senior person who is doing a little bit of mentoring in addition to their current role as well. So 
I thought it was really interesting, that slightly different definition there, but it still very much works um, however you want to look at it. But that mentor is incredibly powerful when it comes to personal and professional development. So this is just a little bit of time now in this particular slide for you to think about why, why is mentoring important to you? Why, why are you possibly thinking of bringing in a mentoring program to support your apprentice? But also, if you're thinking about who are going to be your mentors, who are they? And if they were to undertake this training, then why, why would they? Why, what is it about them that makes them a good mentor? Um, and why does an apprentice need a mentor? So just a few minutes just for you to think that through in whatever role that you might have. So this is, of course, where you can pause the recording. So I'm not going to stop for as long as you might need on this, but I'm going to move us forward. So why is mentoring so important? Um, I'm not going to talk to the slide in depth, but I think it's increasingly more important now because there are so many different things going on in our lives and in our business um, lives too. And also in the economic marketplace of job roles, job seeking, uh, career progression. So I've just put here some really increase in interesting statistics that, you know, the average life cycle of an individual that stays in a business is quite short and is getting shorter every year. And I think part of that is because we're seeing job roles changing quite dramatically. Technology is becoming more and more important in individual job roles. So it means that people's skill sets is evolving and developing and can be moved into different ways and of course also you've got the jobs market which you know at the moment is is very competitive from an employer perspective so people are moving around a lot more than they have done previously um, so you're seeing a lot of candidates for different roles but also vacancy numbers are at record levels too so actually we've got a lot of roles to fill um, but not so many great candidates to fill them, which means, of course, when you've got somebody in the business who's gone through all of that recruitment process, you absolutely want to keep them. But probably more to that point is that you want to turn them into somebody who's really effective and efficient quickly, who can become a high performer. And of course, if they're coming in on an apprenticeship, you, you've straight away got that added benefit of the structure of an apprenticeship standard, the training provider, the, the, you know, the structure of the learning plan, all going in hand in hand with what a mentor can do as well. I think the other big thing to say, of course, is that flexible working. Um, for some people, working from home is, is fantastic. It's really great. Uh, and it fits in with mental health considerations, personal considerations. But you've also got some people where um, they're new to work or they've not been in the workplace for a while. So being in a formal, fully fledged uh, remote working environment and then possibly into a, a pretty hybrid way of working is actually quite stressful. Um, and particularly when they're trying to get their head around a new job and a new organisation, structures, people, ways of working, then it can take them quite a while to actually get into things. That I think is where mentors really do add value. And I'm not just thinking younger people here. I mean, I think that could apply to anyone, but obviously if you're younger, then you haven't got the resilience of having worked for a number of years um, and certainly won't have ever worked in a fully hy hybrid or remote format, not used to um, managing your own time, thinking about your working environment, making sure it's conducive. You possibly don't even know what that means. So having a mentor who can guide you through that and help you be comfortable and confident, not feel isolated, I think is is so, so important. Uh, and why mentoring and apprenticeships is, is really, really vital. Um, I think the mentor also enables anybody to really understand a business quite quickly, 
who knows the different support structures, the different communication lines, um, where to get something, who to speak to, all of that, a mentor can help somebody work their way through really quickly. Um, and it's all about that onboarding experience, isn't it? That somebody who comes into a business who feels valued, who feels supported, who feels that they they can get to grips with things quickly, is going to be somebody who gets a great experience who's going to want to stay. And I would hope actually gets through any probation period a lot better than others. Um, and certainly you want them to become a high performer as quickly as possible. So that mentoring, and I've said here, third party perspective is incredibly helpful for that. You've got a manager who probably is managing a fairly big team. So having a mentor who is looking after some of the people in the team who can just give the managers heads up on certain things or take some of the emphasis away of work so my, maybe they will take away some of the cpd element or you know the development element of the role that's going to help alleviate some of the pressures for the manager too so as you can see there a mentor is not just beneficial to the mentee but can be beneficial to the team to the manager to um, customer service you know and and actually the customer experience as well so um not that i'm overplaying this but i think a mentor can be a vital part of the way that a team is structured and plans for the future so um i think that the best model is to separate the mentor from the manager not always possible i totally understand that um if you're a small organization then it'll be the manager the reason why I say it's better to separate is the fact that the mentor can be that impartial person that the mentee goes to. If it's a manager, the manager automatically wears a hat that the apprentice is aware of. That's that performance management, uh, you know, reporting structure. Whereas a mentor, if that is all they are, then there is a lot more scope for the mentee and the mentor to forge a strong relationship outside of a reporting one. Um, it could be that you use somebody from a different team within the business, if that's possible. But I certainly think that the manager um, having somebody else doing the mentoring is, is really useful for them as well. Um, the mentor can also work with both the apprentice and the manager. So they can ease the workload for both sides, if you like. Um, they can help on block stuff. They can make sure that the manager is aware of how the apprenticeship is going. And that, leave, that leaves some of the time for the manager to focus on other things because they know they're getting an up-to-date picture on how things are going. I wouldn't say a manager should totally be um, devoid of being con connected to the apprenticeship. Absolutely not. The manager must be part of it. They must know how the apprentice is progressing. But the mentor can um, help the mentee with that progress. So communication between the three, absolutely critical um, because you need all to be in alignment. Uh, and I would say also in the early stages of the apprenticeship or whatever programme, that communication is really, really important. Um, it's about settling in that person into their role making sure that everybody is, is seeing the performance from that new member of staff in the same way. Um, if there is a probation action plan in place, then all three are clear on it. The apprentice or, or early talent person knows exactly what targets have been set. And ideally, those targets being set in line with the apprenticeship content as well. So as you can see there, a mentor can be incredibly useful here and as i said i think if the ideal would be to separate them out from that manager role if at all possible so a little bit now about what mentoring is and what it is not and so here's a slide with just a few headlines for you just for thought now if you're using this to um, work with mentors or potential mentors, then what you might like to do at this point is take some of these words from the slide and just break them down into a little bit more as to what that might mean in a mentor-mentee relationship. So for example, if I pick one, um, questions and answers. So what does that mean when you're in that mentor-mentee relationship? Well, I think the mentor needs to be uh, very honest with the 
um, mentee about what their role is and be confident enough to ask the mentee to explain things, to ask them questions on how the programme is going, ask to see what they're doing, but also to pose the questions back to the mentee to say, right, well, okay, you have a bit of a problem here. How do you think you would resolve it? What would you do? Who do you think you need to go and speak to about that? It's a way of actually uh, turning the mentee, who is a learner, let's face it, into um, a confident, self-directed learner, um, but also to build up their confidence. So actually, they probably do know more about the organisation and the apprenticeship content than perhaps they think. They don't always need to go and find out from individuals. They might actually know enough to find out who they speak to, where they go for information, and perhaps even know it already. So I think question and answers is a really big part of that mentoring relationship. I think mentors can be fantastic for building confidence and motivating apprentices or uh, early talent uh, candidates. Um, and it's how they do that, you, you know. And again, it's about building up that relationship with that element of trust in it. Um, also, just a pointer for you, is mentor and mentee relationships are about people. It doesn't always work. And if it doesn't work, don't be afraid to stop it. For the mentee to speak to their manager and just ask for a different mentor and the mentor to do the same. Um, it's no be to blame. It's not an issue. It's just one of those things that sometimes it just doesn't gel. And, and that's absolutely fine. You've got to be happy to, to want to go and seek out the mentor and the mentee. And if, it, if it's not right, then the relationship just won't work at all. And nobody will meet up, nothing will get done. Uh, and the manager will be working directly with that apprentice or early talent candidate. So it is important that actually that relationship is a strong one. Okay, so what it isn't, okay? So it is, and I, I mean, you know, I've got this here on the right of what mentoring is not. But I think we've got a pretty good idea of what mentoring is. But what it is not, it does definitely does not replace the manager. And that is probably the most important element that's on that slide. Uh, the mentor is not taking over any of the responsibilities that the manager would have in terms of um, job performance, career progression, nothing like that. There is nothing um, formally linked to mentoring, unless, of course, you choose it to be. Uh, in terms of career progression or performance bonuses or anything at all like that. Um, it's also not counselling. It is does not replace um, HR, um, doesn't replace um, occupational health or mental health first aiders or anything at all like that that you might have in your organisation. But what it is, it's, it's about sharing information. It's about helping that individual finding their way through processes working practices and structures. Um, it's about giving them an opportunity for conversation. It might be about inviting them to meet other organizations or other people in different parts of the organization. It's about helping that individual to really understand the organization as quickly as they can do and their place within the organization as quickly as they can. So that's things like the culture, the mission, the values. Um, the, added, the value added elements within a business. So, you know, if somebody has, if there's a football club or a Pilates session or something like that, that's where the mentor can say, oh, you might want to. This is available. Did you know this? I mean, for example, we've got a discount program where people can get 20% off different things off the high street. That's what the mentor can talk about to a mentee. So how do you build that effective relationship? And, you know, I've got here that, that business mentor-mentee triangle because we're talking about a relationship that does sit within a business context. So you've always got to be thinking about how that relationship is leading to something that benefits not just the mentee, but the business too. And to be honest, once it benefits the mentee, it should very much benefit the business. I can't imagine it would not. I think the biggest thing that um, a mentor can bring to a mentee 
is the potential for them to really get to grips with the business quickly which also increases their um, quality of experience when they start in an organization. That in turn leads to staff retention. Um, it definitely leads to improved staff experience. Um, and in turn could also mean that somebody getting to grips with their job a lot quicker, which in turn means that they're more effective when they're working with teams, both within their part of the business and also the bigger part of the business. So you can see there that there is a direct correlation between the mentoring role and the way that they that role and the impact for the mentee has on the rest of the business. Um, one thing that is on there is expanding professional networks. It's something that I find apprentices don't naturally do regardless of their, their age or, or what program they're on or what role they are within a business. But most apprenticeship standards now have some sort of link to a professional body. I think giving um, the mentee information on networks that are available to them, both within an organization or connected to an organization, um, incredibly helpful because it's left up to them as to whether they want to pursue it. But the mentor has given them that opening and given them some idea of how beneficial that might be. And certainly a mentor, it's about them keeping themselves up to speed with things that they think the mentor might find interesting. So again, what, what else goes on in the business that maybe the men mentee would benefit from knowing about that perhaps is not directly communicated from the manager? I think the mentor can really open up to the mentee um, the possibilities that exist and get them out of just their immediate team. And I think a mentor also takes on a number of, of different roles. So not just sort of talking about um, different aspects within an organization, but when they're working with a mentee, they wear different hats. And here is, is a hopefully a, a really good visual of some of the different hats that that mentor might wear. Um, if I just pick a couple of them for, for you to sort of think about, but the broker, so the broker would be um, introducing the mentee to uh, perhaps a different team. Perhaps it would be introducing them to uh, an expert in a different part of the organization. It might be introducing them to somebody outside of the organization that you know would be a really beneficial uh, professional person to know and it increases their professional network. Um, clarifier somebody who actually helps the mentee to understand what's around them. It might be about breaking down some of the um, company specific jargon that you've got going on. We all have it um, and it is incredibly difficult sometimes for people in meeting to actually understand what's being said when it's lots of acronyms going on. But that could be a really, really good role of a mentor is to say, right, well, you heard this terminology, it means this, it means that. Um, also might clarify, um, communication structures where they're not particularly clear um, might also be about deadlines, timelines, commitments, uh, where to find things, what goes in particular folders um, in different parts of the system, for example. Um, and definitely, I mean, interestingly, protector, um, that, that is an interesting role. And I think that is going to be a natural part of any mentoring relationship, that you're going to feel a certain amount of protection towards the mentee. Um, you're going to want to make sure that they, um, they're they successful, that you're doing the best you can for them. But what you mustn't do is overstep and take on some of their concerns and worries. If they've got an HR issue, direct them to HR. If there's a welfare issue, direct them to the appropriate places for that. Don't try and solve these things on your own. The mentor is not there for that. You are not replacing natural roles that exist and systems that are exist to um, support and develop individuals. So you've got to be careful that you don't um, overplay any of these hats that you will be wearing as a mentor. There's got to be a balance. Um, and also don't take on too much yourself as a mentor. You know, don't, don't be always saying, oh, I'll go and find this. Oh, oh, I'll do that for you. No, 
put the onus back on the mentee. They're the ones that have got to learn. They're the ones that will benefit from going out and finding out about stuff because it means they'll question. They will um, spend time on it. It will be more important to them. So don't find yourself in a position of, of ending up doing too much. And I think this is a really good one that breaks down those, those hats there for you into what is classified here as effective and ineffective behaviours. And the ineffective is where you go too far onto one side of wearing that hat and it becomes a bit of a, a negative factor. So, for example, challenger is, is in here. Yeah, I mean, I think as a mentor, you do need to challenge a little bit. You do need to push. You do need to put the emphasis back on the mentee to be doing things. However, if you push too far, you become too assertive, you can become aggressive, um, you can become quite demotivational to the mentee as well. So always think about that and try as much as you can to be very self-aware of what role you are taking in the conversations you're having with your mentee and challenge yourself. Am I being too much this way or too little? Um, and that's where it comes from that role and relationship that you create with a mentee. You will learn over time how much the mentee you know, really gets from a particular element of, of facet, if you like, of the mentoring role. Uh, and maybe they really do uh, respond well to being challenged. But then again, maybe they don't. So that's one of those things that you will find out over time. And ask the question of the mentee. You know, is this working for you? Um, am I being too challenging, too pushy? Am I doing too much? Ask, ask them. Uh, I would hope they were confident enough to tell you whether they think it's working or not, or whether they want a little bit more of this from you. Um, it's this two-way thing. It's negotiation all the way through. So it's really important that they feel confident to say um, what they want, uh, whether they want more of this, less of that, etc. So there's two ways of, of being a mentor, really. You can be very, very informal, uh, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Um, or you could put a formality, you know, a structure around what you do. And I'm going to suggest that structure is probably a good place to start, regardless of how you want to go with this. Um, but again, it's negotiation. So it's with you and the mentee deciding how much structure you want to do. So think of it very much as sort of entering into an agreement where both of you explore exactly what it is you can give as a mentor and what they want from you as a mentee. Um, so in terms of setting it up, uh, simple things really is making sure before you ever meet up that you know what you're going to talk about. Makes sense, really. But it's about making sure your time is used effectively. It's about making sure it keeps mentee focused. Um, Make sure you've got clear objectives for the meetings, go through them, keep records of them, um, look back over previous objectives and meetings. How did things go? Do things change dramatically? Do things get achieved when they were supposed to get achieved? Did it have the impact that the mentee was thinking it would do? So if you keep a bit of a record, that's really helpful. And again, decide who's keeping the record. Personally, I would keep get the mentee to keep the record. Um, not least the fact they can use it as evidence for their apprenticeship. So I think that's good. But it also, I think, gives them the responsibility for themselves. This is about their development and giving them the responsibility to monitor how things are going, to reflect on how things are going and what they've gained from working with you, I think is really important. Uh, and that doesn't just work for the apprenticeship, but it also works for their performance review with you in the business as well. Um, how they're doing, um, what they think they're gaining from what they're doing, and the impact of it on their job as well. Don't forget, in most, well, in every single apprenticeship, there is knowledge, skills, and behaviours. And this is a perfect piece of evidence towards the behavioural development of an apprenticeship, particularly when you get to endpoint assessment. So do, as a mentor, make yourself familiar with the behaviours that are in the standard. And if you can, weave them in to the work that you do with a mentee throughout the programme, particularly as you get closer to endpoint assessment, where they are going to be assessed against their behaviours in whatever assessment methods are being used in the endpoint assessment with the endpoint assessment organisation. Um, and certainly, I think you know, 
I would be suggesting that the mentee uses it in their portfolio. So whatever records they keep, they can download it, put it into the portfolio that's then used towards endpoint assessment. It's also a great record of um, the links to any CPD that they're doing as part of their job and part of the apprenticeship. So I think an element of formality is probably a really good thing to do. It gives you both a structure. You can also think about how frequently you want to meet, how long your sessions are going to be. Are they going to be virtual? Are they going to be um, face to face or is it going to be a mixture of the two? So it's a great way to start the, the relationship, to be honest with you, is to um, have that conversation about how you're going to track it. How is this going to work? Um, you know, how formal do you want to be? I mean, some people love copious notes. Some people don't. So it's really thinking about what works for both of you, really and truly. Um, so we know that there are some really key learning processes in any apprenticeship. Um, and what I wanted to do was just pull out where the mentor program is going to have a real impact uh, and would benefit the progress of the apprentice on the program as well. So let's sort of start and, and work our way through them starting in the business. So the first thing is that, that first touch point when they're coming into the company. So the training provider or the trainer will have touched base with them. But I think for you is to have those pastoral check-ins with them, uh, which could be just very short check-ins in the first few months of starting with a few longer ones because you might have some probation um, targets set up in there as well. So really important that they, they see you quickly and that they can turn to you quickly as well, I think. So you might want to do a more frequent um, touch bases with them in those first few months. Induction, mentor, making sure that that mentee understands what's going to happen at induction, how it works, um, what type of induction it is. I mean, it could be a health and safety induction. It might be a corporate one. It might be a team one. It might be an apprenticeship one. But knowing what those are and when the apprentice is going to undertake them and give them a bit of a heads up of what's entailed. Is it virtual? Is it face to face? They're going to have to organize some travel. Um, do they need to do any prep before they go to it? Incredibly helpful. Uh, I think that would that would be wonderful if you could help them out with that. I think also being part of first contact between the training provider trainer and the candidate would be really helpful. Um, what I'm thinking about there is, is the mentor can help the um, mentee be more confident to ask questions of the trainer. Things that they don't understand, but maybe the mentor has picked up that they don't, and they can just encourage the apprentice to ask questions a little bit more. Um, it, uh, we just found that that is incredibly beneficial that that men mentor being there just gives that mentee that little bit of encouragement to challenge a bit more, ask questions, really understand that first contact and what's being asked of them, set for them, et cetera. Um, mentor possibly could step in for the manager if needed when there's a formal progress review. So those 10 to 12 week reviews that are required as part of the contractual requirements of, of an apprenticeship. Um, if the manager for any reason can't be part of it, then maybe the mentor could step in. I wouldn't suggest that often, um, and it's certainly not a replacement for the manager, but it could be helpful occasionally to have the mentor in those sessions, maybe including the manager as well. So just something to think about. I think the mentor can also be incredibly helpful when it comes to some of the learning content uh, and some of the work that the apprentice is being asked to undertake or a T-level student or work experience, particularly when it's to do with workplace-based assignments, assessments, projects. The mentor could be a really great sounding board for the mentee on maybe setting up what a project could be and then going about completing the project, where to find things, etc. And I've suggested there, you know, helping out with, with everyday type of stuff. The CPD log uh, and the creation of that, again, mentor, incredibly helpful. Just a sort of starting point, knowing that maybe there's been some corporate training and capturing that when it was done, how it was done, uh, and guiding them on some of the internal training, perhaps, that they might benefit from doing because they've been there and done it themselves. Um, evaluating themselves. So self-evaluation 
uh, as an apprentice is really quite a difficult thing to do. But a mentor could be really helpful because of their role with a mentee and the challenge they give to the mentee and the questions they ask the mentee to help that mentee become far more self-aware of how they're getting on. Um, being aware that perhaps they don't know as much about something as, as maybe they need to and going away and finding out. Maybe being more self-aware that actually this is a career that they've started on, that they love and they want to do more of it. So I think very useful in terms of that. And, and the next point is that career and further development conversation. It doesn't replace a formal process if you have one in your organisation around what's next, but it does give the opportunity for the mentee to have a conversation with somebody in readiness for that formal meeting. So being able to turn to somebody who knows them really well and knows what they've achieved so far and, and how the apprenticeship is going. Really beneficial helping that mentee to clarify um, how they prepare for that career or performance conversation. Um, because they're not part of it directly, but they do know enough that they can take that step back and say, well, okay, what is it you want from your conversation? What career development do you see? What, what do you think is gonna be useful to you? that builds on what you're learning from your apprenticeship. So hopefully you can see there that um, a mentor all the way through the apprenticeship program has got a really vital role to play that is subtly different to the manager's role. So just in summary, really, um, these are some of the points I would say around mentors. I think it is good practice that all mentors have, sorry, all apprentices have a mentor. Uh, I would suggest it's allocated by the manager um, because the manager knows their teams. They know who would benefit from being a mentor. They know what that individual brings to the new apprentice mentee. Um, and also they're, they're presumably wanting and that individual to do the mentoring role because they are wanting to develop them further. So I think doing getting the manager involved in that is really important. Um, I suggest the mentor is somebody who is from the direct team, somebody who understands their job role, because that's the way of getting that new individual really embedded into their job and the team quickly. Ideally, the mentor to know about the apprenticeship. I wouldn't say it's absolutely vital because they can learn but certainly know some of the rudimentary elements of the apprenticeship. And that's where meeting with the trainer from the training provider early on is really helpful. Um, I would say mentors must meet their mentee really frequently at the beginning of the programme. I've suggested weekly. It doesn't have to be for very many minutes. I think just a quick touch base, maybe 10 minutes. Um, but then you might have other times when it's a little bit longer. Uh, and it might not be quite as frequent. And that's absolutely fine. I think I think that's really important is to sort of flex it to the needs of the mentee and also what the mentor is, is getting back from the mentee. You know, if they're concerned at all, then put in more, put in more. And also then keep the, ment the, the mentee's manager up to speed with things. I've mentioned about stepping in for things. Um, another part that I didn't talk about was endpoint assessment. I think a mentor can be incredibly helpful there, getting the apprentice ready for that endpoint assessment. You can do some mock interviews with them. Um, they can help with the with any presentation or with a report that needs to be done, um, helping pull the portfolio together in the CPD log. Um, you know, we know the managers are going to be very involved in that anyway, but just having somebody else who understands what the apprentice has got to do in the timelines and can just help with that little extra support in readiness, um, incredibly beneficial. And then I've just finished off there by mentors must communicate. That communication triangle is really, really important. The mentoring role should not exist in isolation to the apprenticeship or to the manager. I think the trainer from the training, training provider needs to know who the mentor is and what they're doing with the mentee. Um, the trainer could also be speaking to the mentor and saying, is there any chance you could focus in on this? So you can see if, if you really get it right, then um, it's so totally aligned to just job role in the apprenticeship. And it's all about progress, all about performance, all about making sure the mentee 
is maximizing that, that apprenticeship opportunity with the job role that they're doing. Um, and then a little bit on safeguarding and welfare. Um, if we're talking about apprentices or talking about young people that are on industrial placement and work experience, then more often than not, they're going to be, um, well, sometimes aged under the age of 18. So safeguarding definitely kicks in. I would not put anybody forward for mentoring unless they had a good understanding of what safeguarding is. Uh, and I've just given you a link there to the latest government guidance about keeping children safe. That, of course, will get updated regularly. So it's really important that your mentors, if you have got younger people in the business, understand what safeguarding is and prevent and are up to speed with the, with the legislation. If you can get them on some safeguarding training, then do so. There's some really good external safeguarding training that's available um, as virtual learning modules. Um, and it's just really gives them a better perspective of what to look out for, um, how to make sure that the company's policies are really applied effectively with anyone that comes into the business, but particularly younger people. Um, and again, I said earlier, and I'll, I'll reiterate it, mentors should not try, try to deal with anything on their own. Um, you will more than often, if you're going to have younger people in the business, you'll probably have somebody who, has, who is a safeguarding lead, a designated safeguarding lead. If you're working with apprentices, you're probably going to have a provider or college or a university that's working with you. They will also have designated safeguarding leads. They will have people that are highly qualified and very experienced in all of this. So you've got a structure around you as a mentor. In the first instance, if you've got any issues at all, reach out to the manager of the mentee and also reach out to HR. Um, use the company processes and structures that you have got to protect yourself as a mentor as well as the mentee. OK, um, but do read up on safeguarding and what it means. And it just means that from a practical perspective, that you as a mentor can ask questions to the mentee to make sure they're OK. So, for example, the nights are drawing in. So if, if you were talking to your mentee, you might be just asking questions about travel. I, I mean, this is assuming they're under the age of 18. Um, you know, how are you getting in of a day? Well, you know, where do you park your car if you're driving? Is it in a sort of you know, just making sure that that mentee is thinking about their own personal safety and security as well? And again, any worries at all, feed it back through. Do not deal with it yourself. That, that isn't an absolute no no. And that is it. Um, that, that has been the session on mentoring around apprenticeships and early talent. Hopefully, you found that useful. Um, here in Pearson, we have an apprenticeship program. Uh, we've got 100 odd different apprentices doing I think it's 40 plus different apprenticeships at all sorts of ages and all sorts of, of backgrounds in different parts of the business doing fully virtual hybrid working and some coming into the workplace so we have mentors in place for every single apprentice over and above the line manager and we also have senior leader sponsors for those that are doing higher level apprenticeships because that gives them the positioning in the business for their career progression but the key thing about the mentoring is that it's making sure that mentors really do understand the value of what it is they're getting into uh, and making sure that their, men and their mentees get as much out of that relationship as possible. Guiding the mentees during their induction about the mentoring role so they know what to expect. They know the manager's going to be giving them a mentor. They know to reach out to the mentor as soon as they can and just what benefit that mentor is going to give them. I think that's really, really important. Thank you very much for listening to me and all the very best. Thank you.